So the first thing I'm going to tell you is I've already lied to you. Uh, I'm not going to talk about negotiating with North Korea. I'm not going to tell you what happened in Singapore. I'm not going to tell you what happened in Hanoi. I'm going to tell a somewhat different story, which is about information. And this picture, which has virtually become a cliche, I think most of you have probably seen this at some point, is really a metaphor for the problem of North Korea, which is anytime you're negotiating with an adversary, you have to understand their intentions and capabilities. And North Korea is a virtual black hole with respect to information. And so the question, which if you're a physicist, of course you know this is impossible, is how do you extract information from a black hole? Uh, and, and it's uh, totally by coincidence, a, 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 a reporter called me this morning from The Economist, and they asked me about this picture, because this picture is usually taken as a metaphor or an explanation, really, of what went wrong in North Korea compared to what went wrong in China and South Korea. But in fact, it's also got information in it, because the night lights that are shown here, the emission of light, can be used to construct estimates of economic activity over time by mapping the course of those changes in luminosity over time. And there's a group in Vienna which has tried to do this, uh, called the World Data Lab, headed by a guy named Homi Karras, that many of us know here at GPS. And he was asking me, what do you think of these estimates? And I said, ah, don't know. Uh, so let me um, really just give you some examples of the type of things that people are doing, myself included and others, to try to get at this question of extracting information from a black hole. And I'm gonna start with things that are very simple and then I'm going to move to things which are more complex in real time and that characterize where the field has moved over the last uh, several years. So the first thing I'm going to show you, because I can't help it, I'm not as bad as my colleagues on data. I said that yesterday. Um, but I do, I do find this a really interesting exercise. So North Korea publishes absolutely no trade statistics. They treat them as a state secret. So the only way you can get estimates of what North Korea's trade looks like is to essentially take a look at all of the countries that are trading with North Korea and reconstruct their direction of trade from their trading partners. Uh, and that's this exercise in mirror statistics. And in this, a recent book I did in sanctions, I and others have done this simple exercise, but it really uh, actually provided a very important insight into what's happened uh, in North Korea since, uh, since uh, the, the nuclear crisis started, which is with the imposition of sanctions, North Korea has become more and more dependent on the Chinese economy, the red line that you, that you see here. Uh, it's just gone steadily up, uh, and uh, China now accounts for about 85 to 95 percent of North Korea's trade. And of course, just knowing that means that we knew that China, in fact, had substantial influence over North Korea, despite what they were saying uh, to the contrary. Uh, so um, obviously, this is just baseline information that's important to know. Uh, we can also get information out of North Korea by interviewing refugees. Uh, and this has been a tried and true method for understanding what's happening in socialist countries in Hong Kong. This was an industry in Hong Kong with respect to China, and of course, the Soviet Union as well. And I always like to show these pictures of markets in North Korea, because one of the things that happened after the Great Famine of the early 90s is that North Koreans started to move and started to engage in trade and commerce of various sorts for the purpose of staying alive. And now you see both these kind of informal markets on the left and these more structured markets on the right in which the government is seeking to tax those that are involved in these activities. But uh, some surveys that we did of North Korean refugees that had escaped uh, gave us some insight into how pervasive this sort of market activity is. We found, for example, that 70% of the refugees, admittedly a select group, reported that most of their income, most of their income came from market activity. And this is in a state socialist economy. So we know that this is a country which is changing quite dramatically, but the only way we can figure that out is to talk to those uh, who are leaving. Um, the, probably the biggest change that's happened over the last several years is the growth of satellite imagery and a series of platforms uh, that are permit outside researchers using open source information to analyze what's happening on North Korea by looking at satellite imagery. 
And I'll show you some pictures of that in a minute, but one of the biggest findings that we have from this satellite information, and this is again, open source, unclassified information, is that North Korea's missile tests, which started at a handful of major test sites, have now been emanating from all over the country, suggesting that these missiles are actually deployed down to the unit level. This is an important strategic thing to know. We know exactly where these things are coming from, we know that they're dispersed, and we know that that poses a particular uh, security challenge. And these kinds of issues of using satellite imagery extend way beyond the security sphere to things like human rights. Um, I've been interested throughout the time I've, I've been working on North Korea and human rights issues, how we promote human rights. And in the course of submitting information to the Commission of Inquiry, the UN Commission of Inquiry and Human Rights uh, in North Korea, one of the things I saw from some of my colleagues who work at the Committee on Human Rights in North Korea are these incredible projects on the concentration camps in North Korea. And we now have satellite imagery of those camps. We know approximately how many people are in them. And by triangulating those satellite imagery with interviews with refugees, we can find out what exactly was happening in these camps. Um, so these are really, and of course, you've probably seen pictures of places where, uh, of uh, missile sites and things like that as well. Um, but this, this one image, I think, is really interesting because it's showing where the satellite imagery is going. These are two images which were taken one minute apart, one minute apart. So we're now down to being able to watch things in near real time. And if we want to know something about North Korea's intentions, this picture actually is very revealing because this is a monument that was built in honor of the long-run missile launches that North Korea undertook in 2017. You think they're going to give these things up? We actually think that Kim Jong-un is in this delegation, which you can see worming across this huge edifice which has been constructed to honor this missile launch. So even intentions of adversaries can be gleaned in part by gaining this type of information. I've only got a few seconds, and so let me uh, show you some hieroglyphs uh, because this, uh, this is a, uh, some work from a group that I'm currently negotiating an agreement so our, our students can work for them. But big data is also starting to play a very interesting role in what we know about North Korea. Each one of these little hieroglyphs is based on the following proposition. There's one firm in each of these groups which has been granted a license by the Russian government to import North Korean labor. And through the screening of um, publicly available evidence, this group was able to put together maps of how these firms were layered into uh, multiple holding companies and fake holding companies that would hide who the ultimate beneficiaries were of that, uh, of that uh, imported Korean labor in violation of sanctions. And so I'll close out by saying that um, if you want to ask me what I think is going on with negotiations with North Korea, I'm happy to, to tell you about that, but we can only go into those negotiations and make sense if we're able to understand what's going on in uh, these types of places that are black holes. Thanks very much.